So Anne-Marie, thank you very much for taking the time to show us and our members around the garden at Le Manoir. Oh, it, absolute delight. Um, always delighted to talk to people that love gardens, love food, um, and be more than happy to take people around on a private tour of the gardens as well to look at their Pacific interests. So for those starting off with vegetables, um, and probably one of the biggest questions we get asked by absolutely everybody is watering, um, which I know sort of seems to be sort of almost like scientific to people that, that are not growing already. And the, the, it is one of the hardest things to teach people. And some people are naturally heavy waterers, some people are naturally light waterers. And the, the most simplest way is, whether it's soil, whether it's compost, if it's looking shiny, it's got enough moisture, it's possibly too wet. If it's dry and crumbly and you could blow and it's all dusty, it's far too dry. If it's got a bit of darkness, no shine, then the watering's just right. Everybody wants a recipe to say it's this amount of water every day. Unfortunately, unless you're growing inside and you can control everything, when you're outside, a windy day, a sunny day, will evaporate an awful lot of water. So the thing to do is get into the habit of checking your vegetables, your plant, whether it's your pot, your whole garden, just check it every day and make that decision. Look at the weather forecast. Um, if you've got an average sized garden, tomatoes along a fence, nice and sunny, um, just keep the frost away from them, keep them well fed, very simple thing to do. There's nothing better than fresh tomatoes and fresh basil. Basil itself, this could be in a pot on your windowsill. Um, we grow the two together. The basil deters aphids away from the, so we do a lot of companion planting. So you're using two vegetables which flavor-wise go beautifully together, but as a growing partnership, they work very well together and look after each other as well. So these are, if you've got a little sheltered garden, absolutely perfect. If you've got a little porch, glass porch conservatory, tomatoes will grow beautifully in there. They don't have to be quite as tall or quite as large as these. There's some beautiful hanging basket sized tomatoes you can have either side of your doorway. Pick them on the way in from work. Pick your basil too and you put your salad together and you're eating a bit of pasta. Your supper is ready within minutes. So we're in our pumpkin and squash patch and this is a beautiful heritage variety, Delicata and a very, very good tasting squash. Very productive, not one of the biggest ones. So if you haven't got quite so much room, this is a squash that I would suggest. What you might also see is we've got some mat in here and this is to help protect the squash as it grows, retain moisture, especially with the heat that we have every now and again, and um, looks after the soil without the weather beating it down. We also, to try and make the garden look attractive as well, the squashes and pumpkins grow beautifully against sunflowers. Um, so not only does it look attractive, we can actually dry the sunflowers and have the sunflower seeds for ourselves. If we like baking, we can put in with our breads. Um, if not, we can leave during the winter to dry naturally and then the wildlife will come in and take the seeds and eat them, especially the smaller birds. And they're the little birds that will bounce around during the winter looking for the little bugs that are hiding in your garden over winter. So you mentioned the courgette earlier as a nice, uh, versatile uh, vegetable for someone to start off with, but we've yeah. also got some chard here as well. Oh, the chard is beautiful, and I, th I think we've got a good example here. This was sown direct in April, and um, we just put a bit of fleece over it, just mainly to keep sort of birds from scratching, squirrels from scratching. Um, it could be netting. Um, you could keep them in pots and plant them out a little bit later if, if you prefer, if, if you've sort of got a lot of wildlife around you, but very, very hardy. Um, very established, it's already been cut once. Um, you can see all the beautiful different colours. Um, so that sort of adds so much interest. Um, some people like eating it just raw as a salad, um, heated. Um, you can do lots of sort of cheesy dishes with it. And um, when it's young, the leaves are nice and tender and it's like a spinach substitute. Okay. So in some ways you've almost got two vegetables in one place. Um, and you can see, yes, I think our rows are about 15 meters, but even if you just had 40, 30 centimeters, there's actually quite a lot there. Um, those two rows could feed a family of four, um, a couple of side dishes a week quite easily. 
So Amory, if you could tell us a little bit about the dish that you feel really best exemplifies this wonderful garden ethos. Oh, well, we're in the tunnel with all the courgettes and that really is uh, the main staple of the Assiette Amory dish, which um, that dish has always been named after the head gardener who, who's here at the time. And um, it absolutely encapsulates, for me, summer. It has baby broad beans, pea shoots, um, the courgette flowers. Um, we've got some of the larger courgettes here. And the courgette flower here is the star of the show. We grow them undercover because we actually want to use the flower, which can be stuffed with, oh, you could make your own crab mousse, um, feta cheese, a little bit of honey, a few pine nuts, tiny pinch of salt, absolutely delightful. And it's a very, very simple dish. It looks so beautiful on the plate. And obviously, you could easily again do this at home. Just take the stamen out, which is this piece. This is a bit you don't particularly want to eat. Um, you can then, whatever you want to eat, you can stuff, wrap it up, um, have a plateful, share with friends. Um, these can actually be steamed as well. And um, one of the top tips that I learned from the chefs is if you actually put a knife through and slice the courgette, the steam rises and cooks at the same speed as the flour. Or, my top tip, as I tried this at home, because I do like to go home and have a go, um, I actually take the flour or steam it separate to the courgette, then I know it, and then I just put them close together on the plate and it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's such an easy vegetable to grow. Um, as long as you've got 60 centimetres by 60 centimetres, um, one plant will produce double this in a week. So if, if you like your freshness, um, you can either pick them lovely and young, you can pick them this size or you could allow it to become a huge marrow for the end of the season. Um, but the nice thing is it gives you choice. If you want to um, pick regularly, if you want to go away for a couple of weeks, come back, it'll still be fine and you'll still have some vegetables that haven't gone to waste. Amazing. And in terms of planting then as, at home, as you say, having that space, when would you roughly plant and when would you be looking to sort of harvest for young and, and for the um, mid of the season? The courgettes, um, they'd all, you never want to put them out until all the frosts are gone. Or if you've put them out and it turns a little bit cold, um, a few sheets of newspaper over the top or horticultural fleece if you're a bit more advanced and been gardening for a little bit longer as long as they don't get chilled um, they're great you can grow them from seed you buy a packet you get about 30 seeds for about two pound um, or the other thing is just buy a plant which will take you through all the slightly more if you're just beginning will get you to an easier place um, they do like lots of water, they like lots of feed, and when gardeners talk about feed, we're talking about manure um, or tomato feed. There's not very, although it's called tomato feed, um, all vegetables and flower plants love tomato feed. It's got really good balance of potassium in, which helps produce flowers, helps produce the setting of fruit, um, and that's just a few drops in a watering can once a week.